Hey guys, welcome to the shop. Now this week, we're going to be doing a review on the Shars 1-inch grinding vise. Now this is a neat little guy. I bought it off eBay and I want to show you what you get or don't get for your money. We're going to put it on the plate and we're going to put it to the test. I also got some neat footage that some of you guys will appreciate that I gathered this week. So I hope you enjoy. Alright, so here's a little closer look at the Shars 1-inch grinding vise. Now, what attracted me to this vise was its size. Now, I bought this vise primarily to regrind carbide inserts on my tool and cutter grinder when I get it going. And it was relatively cheap, you know, less than 50 bucks shipped, and I got it in two days. It came in a little cardboard box, and uh, the vise was in a bag in the box, and this cer certificate was in the box, and it says, We here guarantee that this product has been tested and qualified and meets all the requirements of the relative standards. Now, I don't know what those relative standards are, but uh, we're going to check it and see if it meets our standards. And now, we're going to do a fairly thorough review on this. We're going to check and see if the bed is parallel with the base. We're going to see if the base is square with the front. We're going to see if the jaw is square with the bed and the top parallel with the base and the sides parallel with each other. So we got a lot of things to check. I got several things that are obviously wrong with this that I'm going to go over and uh, we should know this little thing pretty good by the time we're done. Alright, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over some of the bad things that I found with this vice right out of the box. I mean, I was really surprised at how bad it was. Now, it was filthy. This thing was covered in grinding dust. It looked like they had rolled it in oil and grinding dust and slid it in a bag and shipped it to me. That's how dirty this thing was. Not only was it dirty, but it was covered in burrs. Now, I've already cleaned it up and I stoned it because I necessarily didn't plan to do a review on it. I precision stoned it and uh, got most of the burrs off. Not only was it dirty, but all these little M4 holes, it's got three M4s on this side, three on the other, and two in the bottom. They were completely plugged with chips. I had to use a torch cleaner and compressed air to get all the chips out. So I think the reason that they can sell it for the price point that they do, I mean, there's not much margin for profit at 50 bucks shipped on a vice like this coming from across the ocean. I think the reason they can sell it for that price is that they pay attention to nothing other than critical surfaces. Uh, there was no love given to this vice at all. Several things that are wrong with it that I just caught by eye. One of them is that where they deburred this radius here, they got their machine or tool off to one side really bad. Hopefully you can see that. Another thing is these reliefs here on the sides for the movable jaw. Now those are non-critical surfaces, but by eye, I can tell you that this surface is lower than this one. And it's basically the same on the front. It's just an error in the vise, but it's not in a critical you know, surface. So those are a couple things that really you know turned me off on this thing right out of the box. Let's check and see how accurate this thing is. First thing we're going to check is the fit of the movable jaw. Now, I don't know if you can hear that, but it's got basically just enough play to where it operates smoothly, and it does. Here's the screw. I've already got it out just for you know quick review. So the jaw operates smoothly, and it feels pretty good, so I was happy with that. And most of the grinding on this vise looks, you know, decent. It's a looks like a usable usable vice. Let's check and see if the bed of this thing is parallel with the base. I think that'll be a good place to start. Alright, so we're going to come in with we'll zero just on one spot here. Okay, I'm satisfied with that. I'm going to slide this vice under here. And we're needle width above. There's a little dip there. About a tenth, almost a tenth. 
low right between the right in the middle there come over to the other side back to zero and get a little dip there then it comes back up and kind of spikes at a tenth high so I would say that the parallelism between the bed of this and the base are within you know a tenth and a half just a quick little uh, you know measurement but that's not too bad uh, I can live with that and uh, for my needs I think that'll be just fine so now let's check and see if the sides are parallel with each other and then we'll move on to the top and the bottom these uh these Kim wipes are really good you know they don't leave any lint behind and uh, they just make sure you get a good reading you know if you got if you was to try to use Kleenex or paper towels you know you'd get all kinds of lint and stuff and it wouldn't be good not on the plate anyway so we're gonna come in and zero on this side if we can Happy with that. Sweep down this front side. It's pretty good. Down here. So we're about a half a tenth low. And back on zero. Let's go up here and check this jaw. Zero. Pretty good. So, now I'm happy that these two sides are parallel with each other. So, we haven't been much over a tenth so far out and uh, you know for a little vice like this and that's not too bad I'm actually surprised given all the bad things that I've found with it all right so now we're gonna check and see if the front here is parallel with the top clean it off come in at zero it's close enough for me Now this is a tense indicator, so it's going to pick up basically anything that's off on this. There's a tenth low. Tenth. And there's a little above zero. Yeah, basically within a tenth. Uh, that's actually decent. Check out this old dozer, guys. This thing's been sitting here for as long as I can remember. There's a lot of steel in that old thing. Kind of, kind of neat. It's just sitting by the road out from my house. I just thought I'd uh, share it with you guys. All right, let's check our fixed jaw to see if it's parallel with the front here. Should come in and zero. Happy with that. Sweep across. Not too bad. I just bumped the indicator there. Zero sweep. I mean, almost nothing. So pretty good. Let's check it 
to what would be top to bottom. Little needle bounce, maybe a quarter of a tenth. Just, you know, hard to tell once you get down that low, but it's good. Now let's check our little, uh, if we can, this is awful thin surface here, our little ground in parallel. and try to stay on it. Showing a tenth. Really just depends on where I'm at to be honest. It almost just wants to fall off of each side. So that's a needle width above one tenth. Come back. Hard. This little surface is hard to check. Yeah, it just depends on where I'm at. It may be actually off a little uh, top to bottom. But it could be just the radius of the ball on the end of the indicator falling off the edge. Yeah, I don't know. It's hard to tell. But that doesn't look too great, to be honest. Sweep again. Trying our best to stay in the middle. Okay, about the same. A needle width above a tenth. From one side to the next, we get a little wobbly through the center if we don't stay still I'm gonna just call that, I'm gonna say it's within a couple tenths because that's hard to it's really hard to tell yeah I think it's just uh, it, it could be off top to bottom a little that's what it's looking like if it's not the radius of the ball falling off the edge, which it, that is right there. I know, of course. Come back on the center. And we're getting, you know, that same reading. About a needle width above a tenth. And it's hard to stay on, but whatever. You've seen it within, you know, probably a you know tenth and a half across, but top to bottom it looked like it was, you know, it's either me or it's off of a couple tenths. But you see it, you know, not horrible, but not not great. Okay, now that we know with the you know decent amount of accuracy. Uh, or a decent amount of reason how accurate this thing is let's see if we can check for square now I know that this surface is parallel with this surface and this surface is parallel with this surface but I don't know that this surface is square with this surface well I just bought this and I checked it it is a brown and sharp number 559 Toolmaker Square. It's a four inch version and uh, I checked it with a surface gauge. These are self-proving. I come in here with the indicator bumped and rocked on all four sides. Got exactly the same reading. Checked about four places going up. Now it's possible that just because you check two places, top and bottom, that your surface could be, you know, a banana. Just because this surface and this surface or this point and this point are square to each other doesn't mean that it's you know this surface is flat but I checked it in several points and you know 
it seems to be right on the money. So we're going to come in, we're going to set this guy up against here, and see if we can get some light in between there. And since we know that our fixed jaw is parallel with within reason within our front, if we're square between this surface and this surface, that'll mean that our fixed jaw is square to the base. So let's set this up and get a light behind it. All right, now I only paid 50 bucks for this thing. I was really happy, you know, to get that. I did not have a square reference in the shop. Last thing or last time this was calibrated was in 1998, so it's a little out of date. But uh, you know. This thing probably spent 99% of its life in the, in the box. It come in a decent wooden box. And uh, they shipped it really well, so I was happy with that. And uh, they wanted $85 for it, I think, shipped. I offered $50, and they took it. So I got it at a reasonable price. Now I'm going to set this up here as good as I can. And then we're going to turn out the light, and I'm going to put a flashlight behind it. And we're going to see how much light we can see, if any, between the two. So I can see, well, let's see if I can adjust it a little more, just to be fair. So I can see light in between there. And let's wipe these surfaces off just to be safe. Put any misleading information out. Wipe our little ice off. Bring it up. I would say that that is set up there good. And that's more like it. It is square. We can see our light shining through our through our uh, little holes here, but none in between our vice. So now we know that the front surface of this vice is square to the base. So this surface is parallel with this surface within reason. So that tells me that the fixed jaw is square with the bed of the vise. So that's pretty good. I'm happy about that. All right, one more thing here. And that I checked the top. I spare you the time. It is parallel with the base. Um, I get it's well below a tenth. So I spare you that time. But uh, the fit between the fixed jaw and the movable jaw, the way that they close up, to me, looks really well. I really don't have a great way to test it, but they feel good. They close up to a point to where I can't get any light in between them. So I'm really happy about the, the fit there also. Well, I guess my final thoughts on this little vise is that it's decent. Not good, but not bad. Yeah. You know, all the critical surfaces on it are not that bad. They're within a couple tenths, and I think that, uh, you know, for my needs, that will be just fine. I primarily bought it for the built-in little parallels in the jaws and its size. I wanted to use it on my cutter grinder to possibly, you know, regrind little carbide inserts and stuff. And for that, I think that it'll be just fine. I guess to sell it at the price point that they did, you know, they had to compromise somewhere. And uh, I think they compromised every non-critical surface on this thing. It would have been real nice if the uh, little mounting holes and stuff were completely jammed with chips. I mean, I had to really work to, to get these little holes cleaned out. And it was filthy. I really had to just soak it down and, and uh, stone it off. Every place on it that could have a burr did. And uh, I was really disappointed there. But, you know, fairly happy with its accuracy. A lot of you guys may remember this spice here. Now, I did a review on it a while back. I got it sent to me for free. And if you're interested, you can go back and check the video out. It's a pretty decent video. We checked it out just like we did this one. And, uh, you know, 
it's extremely accurate. It was clean, it was accurate. The only problem with it was the ground bees in the in the movable jaw. But you know, nothing's perfect. So I was pretty happy with that, and uh, actually I was really surprised at how good it was for the money. So. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to share my videos with a friend. Put them on your Facebook page or anything you got. That would really help us out. Uh, I could use the support. Thanks to all my subscribers, old and new, and my patrons. If you haven't, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking on my little guy up here and hit the bell for notifications. And as always, I'll see you next time.